you know, um, let's pray and we get into it. Father, we thank you. We worship you, my, my king, my glorious one. Your greatest examples in the word are people who had issues like we do. And so, Father, let us release and not just look like Christians, but be Christians, not just look like believers, but be believers. And clearly stepping to the realm of those who are inhibited in their faith, become disciples of the living Christ. I pray that your grace and your mercy would be upon me as I minister your word today. However you want to do it, I'm yielded to that and I release myself from all condemnation and judgment of the world. Thank you, God, that you have assembled your people for such a time as this. Let the spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, rest upon your people today. Walk the aisles, minister to them at a level that they can understand. Lord, prick our hearts, convince us that there is only one way. That is the way of the kingdom. And we give you praise. We thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, you know, my wife and I, again, we were we've been in uh, Chicago all week long at uh, Dr. Winston's and Oh, my God. I say that intentionally. Um, who watched it at all? Who watched it at all? OK. All right. Um, <laughs> I said this last week. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be prophetic, but I said this last week. If I see if I if I'm around the camera, I'm going to say hello. But um, I know that who saw me on camera. OK. <laughs> We got one, two, three. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, it wasn't intentional. We just sat where they sat us. OK. Uh, but the presence of God was so strong and um, so energizing. Uh, Romans four said it is God who who quickeneth the dead and call those things that be not as though they were. And so each one of us, each one of us has been quickened by the power of God to do what we do. Quicken means to make alive. And. We were dead, and the scripture says in our trespasses and sins, we were dead. But God made us alive through Jesus Christ to, to righteousness. And righteousness is the only way. But, but I want you to, I want you to, I'm not, I don't have, you don't, I don't have any papers in my hand. Y'all see that, right? Okay. And that's a good thing this morning. Uh, I need 45 minutes. Give me 45 minutes on your clock, please. That's what the Lord said, 45 minutes, and that's what I'm going to stick to. But with that being said, each one of us has to understand what God is doing in our lives. If you don't understand that, coming to church is pointless. It is absolutely pointless. Uh, look around you. I had them pull chairs out this morning because the Lord told me to in the, in the midst of the week. He said, just pull the chairs out. He said, put the chairs in when you need them. Because I'm not, I'm not looking at this from a numbers perspective. I'm looking at this from a fruit perspective, from a maturation perspective. You have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the reason why that's there is because it is possible for you to grow. But if it's possible for you to grow, it's also possible for you not to grow. OK. And I submit to you that most Christians, most Christians, without being able to quantify that, most Christians that you and I both know, when you look at their lives, unless they've stepped into a realm of believing God unhindered, unshackled. There's a there's a there's a radio program called Unshackled. I used to listen to it when I was back in the day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Unshackled from Moody Bible it's right out of Chicago. I was listening to it back in the 90s when I was running mail. I used to be a, a mailman. Now I'm delivering God's mail. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But but with that, I used to listen to Unshackled and 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 so and I still have it. They have an app. You can listen to it if you want to pull it down. But but I can remember hearing testimonies and stories of people who just dared to believe God beyond what it looked like. And that's why you and I are here. And so with that being said, you have to know what God is doing in your life. He's doing greater than what you're seeing because he's never going to reveal the whole thing to you because he does not want you one to be overwhelmed two to be to be anxious and get in front of him. So so there is a there is a necessity on God's part for you and our life to be completely reliant on him. Say this with me. God hates self-reliance. Turn to somebody and say that. Say God hates self-reliance. He literally hates it. He literally hates it. He literally hates it. Not figuratively. He literally hates self-reliance. And most of us, our struggle is, struggles have been in the area of thinking for whatever reason. I know why, but I'll get there. For whatever reason that somehow or another, will God do what he said he would do? 
Every religious teacher, every religious teacher, every denominational bias that you've ever had placed upon your heart, it comes from people believing that God won't do what he said he would do. Are you, are you here this morning? God's plan for us is to deliver us from all condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear the Lord say, Lord, I'm just, gonna, I'm just taking my time. I got 45 minutes. I got 43 and a half hours, I think. <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Do not raise your hand. How many of you prayed this morning? Do not raise your hand. Because if you raise your hand, I'm gonna think it's a source of pride. You didn't accomplish any more than those that did pray this morning. God doesn't love you more because you prayed. He doesn't love you less because you didn't. <laughs> How many of you gave a witness to your faith this past week? Don't raise your hand, right? And the religious mindset is that if I do these things, I'm somehow special to God or I'm somehow favored by God. Or if I don't do them, somehow another God is disappointed in me. Or somehow if I don't do these things, I'm less than a Christian. You cannot change who you are. Oh, help me, God. <laughs> you are not. We are not once saved, always saved. Because you have the ability to turn your back. Just like this woman of mine. Uh, I said that wrong. Uh, <laughs> she don't like when I say it. This wife of mine, this woman that thou has given me. This wife of mine, the love of my life for 37 years now. I could choose to walk out of her life any moment I want to. Right? It doesn't cancel out. Bishop, help me this morning. Possibly God. It doesn't cancel out the soul tie that she has with me yes. just because I, cl I choose to walk away from her. She chooses to walk away from me. Doesn't change a thing. Are you hearing me this morning? Then what does matter? What matters is that I have to stand before God one day and say that this is the woman that you gave me. I did my best concerning her and vice versa. So when you, if you choose, somebody chooses to walk away from God, it doesn't mean God loves them any less. It uh -huh. just means that they've walked away. Yes. The good thing about God is the scripture says that he is married to the backslider. Yes. <laughs> he loves his people. Doesn't matter what you do, what you don't do, how you look, how old you are, what your gender is. He doesn't care. He loves you. Come on, say that with me. He loves me. Uh, do you believe it? Yes. See, what, what we have done is, and we're talking, our, our, our scriptural reference or our, our, our uh, theme for the year has been, in 2018, we believe to see the potential in every seed. Isn't that right? I haven't, I haven't strayed from that. That's where we are. And we're getting ready to embark in the book of Galatians uh, to get to the fruit of the Spirit. But, but before you can do that, you have to understand certain things as it pertains to what God is saying and doing regarding you and I. Yeah. Turn to Genesis 4 and 7 real quick with me. They asked me this morning for my notes. They texted me or whatever the case is. And usually I send my notes the, uh, notes the night before. And um, I was like, Lord, <laughs> what you want me to say today? And how many of you know that when you get into a place of Ministering this word, you have to become fully persuaded. Oh, yeah. Whenever the time comes that you stand before God's people, whatever, whatever platform you have, I don't care if it's at a, a, a luncheon, I don't care where it's at, you make sure that you're trusting in God, not just who you think you are. Yeah. That doesn't mean not be prepared. I'm always prepared. I got pages and pages of notes. But, but I, I, the Lord has just kind of told me, said, listen, I want you to just share some things from, that I am gonna, and I'm going to give you and from your heart. So I'm going to do that. Romans, I'm, excuse me, Genesis 4. And um, verse six, if you have a say, amen. amen. Now, I want to submit this to you before we get into this. Has God changed? No. How do you know that? 
Because the word says it. He never changes. He does not change. Okay? Now, this is God talking. Right. If you have Genesis four, verse six, they'll put it up on the, on the board. You got it up there. What version is that? NLT. NLT. OK, I'm going to read from the expanded Bible. So read along. Verse six. The Lord asked Cain, why are you angry? Why do you look so unhappy? Why is your face or your countenance fallen? Verse two or excuse me, verse seven says, if you do things well or correctly, say correctly, correctly. say appropriately, appropriately. I will accept you but if you do not do them well say correctly or appropriately sin is ready to attack you the king james version says sin lieth at the door who has that right crouching at the door sin wants you but you must rule over it look up at me that's verse seven the ability for us to get god to do what we desire what we want, what we believe, move over here. What we need has already been established in the heart of God. He is not withholding from you and I for any reason. Other than we don't know who we are. If I don't know that this is my wife, let me say it a different way. I use her because I can pick on her. If I pick on you, you might get mad at me and leave. She ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Just kidding. If she goes to the bank right now, I don't have to be present for her to get whatever I've got in the account. That makes sense? Why? Because we have the same name, same last name. We have the same authority. Now, the banker may say, well, I've never seen you before. As long as she can present the right credentials, yeah. she can get anything that's available to get. Yes. You and I have been given the right credentials with God. Yes. Most of us don't know it, and most of us don't know how to use it. Right. People have misinterpreted the, 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 uh, what they call the prosperity gospel. They've misinterpreted because they, they thought that it's a, simply a, a divine slot machine or divine lottery and that is just not the case. Amen. That is just not the case. And if you're going to be a part of this church and you're going to you're going to you're going to uh, receive the things of God, you got to believe what I'm telling you. If you don't believe what I'm telling you you're in the wrong place, I wouldn't lie to you. I would not lie to you. I trust God and I fear God too much, not fear as and afraid, but reverence him too much to lie to his people. That being said, my wife said something just a few minutes ago that a lot of you <laughs> choked on <clears throat> because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Now, it's my job to tell you who you are and who you can become. But it's not, I'm not giving you something that, I haven't, that, that God hasn't already told you himself. He's told you this, but you fail to believe it because every religious teacher that's ever stood before you has told you that, you know what, um, you know, you never know what God will do. Why not? It's all written here. Are y'all hearing me? This is where it's written, what he will do. As we get into the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, I remember hearing this long, long time ago, years ago, that the book of Galatians can be uh, interpreted as a, the Christian's covenant. It is the Christian's document of what God will do, has done, and is going to do for your entire life. That's Galatians. We got to know this stuff. I'm going to ask you a question. Put your religious toes in. You got to admit? <laughs> How many of y'all, by show of hands, now I asked, I asked you not to raise your hands three minutes ago, now I'm asking you to show your hands. By show of hands, don't need any more money between, the now, between now and the time you leave from this earth should God delay the coming of the Lord. How many of y'all don't need any more money? Raise your hand. Look around the room. <laughs> she just looking. She ain't, she ain't signifying. Y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's just looking. She's trying to see. She ain't signifying. 
You need it. Why do you need it? Because that's how you get stuff done. Can you, can you think of a life? I'm, I, I'm, I'm just going to stay right here until the Lord tells me to move. Can you think of a life where you didn't have to concern yourself with making sure that the, 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 the mortgage gets paid or the car note gets paid? Can you think of that? It's almost like a fantasy, isn't it? You almost have to force yourself to go there. Now, in church, in church, they have told you that God will supply your need, not your greed. <laughs> How many greedy folks we got in here? Would y'all raise your hand? I ain't greedy. You know what? I, I am aware of what God needs to get done. And, and, and God is not jumping out of heaven to do it. God is not jumping out of heaven to do it. And God is not picking people at random to do this. He's picking people, selecting people who have chosen to believe the terms of his covenant. And it is clear for everybody. Now, you got to make some choices. Because clearly, just like he said over in Genesis, Genesis uh, 4, you know, and I, 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 I picked that intentionally at his leading. Because when he deals with Cain and Abel, it sets a precedent for the rest of the world to follow. Now, please stay with me because I'm going to move kind of fast. But he sets a precedent and he says, if you do well, will not God accept what you offer unto him? Can somebody define well for me? What does well look like? What does well for Dr. Andrea Marshall look like as opposed to Pastor Tommy Roberts? What does well look like for Roger Titone? J. Roger Titone, as opposed to Tommy Roberts. You can't figure that out. Because well, the definition of well is, 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 is uh, subjective to each one of us. Come on now. D does well mean that I have to pray six hours a day? For you it might. Right? Say amen to that. For, for her, it might. For him, it might mean praying three hours a day. For me, it might be, mean praying 30 minutes a day. But well is only defined by the voice of the Spirit of God on the inside of you that inspires you to get up and face the world, right, and dominate it. You're not called to be, you're not, we're not called to be uh, uh, just average. We got to stop being mediocre. Most people are okay with average. Well, you know, um, the Lord's not done with me yet. You know, what's that? What's that? What's that one we hear all the time? You know, that old song. He said, "Please be patient with me. God is not, God is not done with me yet." Well, that's a lie. How many y'all know that's a lie? In Jesus Christ, the redemptive package of my, my father, our father sent Jesus to destroy the works of the sin and death and darkness. How can he not be done with you? Right. Doesn't mean you're perfect. Stop trying to be perfect. Be righteous. Yeah. 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 It is a finished redemptive package. Are you, do you see what I'm saying here? So he says, if it's, it, it, you know, if it, let's read it one more time. Still in Genesis 4. Let me read it one more time. Let me go back there. If you are doing right, surely you are. I'm reading this from the, from the uh, now I'm reading this from the New Jerusalem Bible. Verse, Genesis 4, verse 7. If you are doing right, surely you ought to hold your head high. But if you're not doing right, sin is crouching at the door, hungry to get you. You can still master him. What happens is sin Listen, 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 listen. This is why this church does not preach predominantly about sin. I don't have to. You face it every day. Every day. And because you've heard such teaching that has caused you, and, and, and it's, like, it's like my brother, you know, it's, it, it just gets embedded in you. And, and so your mind is constantly bombarded about not doing right. I'm not doing right. I miss church. Pastor, I'm not doing right. I, miss, I didn't give in the offering. I'm not doing right. I miss 12 Hail Marys and 13 Hallelujahs. I'm not doing right. I ate pork today and I'm not doing right. 
I watched a bad movie and I'm not doing right. But it does not change positionally what Jesus has done in your life. Stop allowing it to in your thinking. The reason why I say that is because if I, if I allow it to in my thinking, then I somehow or another feel like I've got to do something extra to please God. Turn to Ecclesiastes 3 for me real quick. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Come on, say thank you. Come on, say thank you. Don't get quiet on me now. Y'all ain't seen me. I've been gone all week. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ecclesiastes 3, I think it is what I want. Let's see here. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let me, let me find it in my, in my Bible. I've got, I've got my little electronic deal up here and, and by necessity, but it just works well. Ecclesiastes 3. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Did y'all have a good week? Those of you that tuned into the conference, it was better in person. It was better in person. It was better in person. Thank you, Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see where I want to go here. Glory to God. Verse 14. Verse 14. Um, let's, let's start at 13. You got that? Ecclesiastes 3, Ecclesiastes 3.13. Scripture says, and when we eat and drink and find happiness in all of our achievements, this is a gift from God. Now, look up at me. In other words, whatever you ascribe uh, um, success to, you can be thankful to God for having that success, whatever it is. As an entrepreneur, as a man who's been in business, God, 50, 50 plus years, successfully. What does he measure success by? Getting projects finished. Getting projects finished. He didn't say money. Some of y'all would have said money. I would have said money. I don't have, I don't have money. If I got $100,000 coming in a week, I'm saying, you know. <laughs> Why y'all looking at me like that? Y'all got $100,000 coming in a week? Anybody? Someday. Someday, yeah. Let's, let's Today, not yet. So what do I measure success by? So what I, in, in other words, he says here, he says that uh, I know that, uh, excuse me, and when we eat and drink and find happiness, all our achievements, in all of our achievements, this is a gift from God. Verse 14, I know that whatever God does will be forever. Please look up at me. Has God saved your soul? Yes. Is it forever? Yes. yes. Now, I already qualified this. You can still walk away from it. OK, don't don't get it twisted. Make sure you hear what I'm saying. So I know that whatever God does will be forever to to this. There is nothing to add. You can't add anything to it by how spiritual you are. Um, we grew up in a Pentecostal holiness church and they would do things. Uh, and I say this from a from the perspective of a young kid, because I didn't know then what I know now. They would put us, for example, we would go on a consecration and we'd spend the weekend in church. Anybody ever been there? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we would go in on what, a Friday, possibly? We go on a Friday, right? Yeah. Uh, come in after school. My, our dad was a pastor, my brother, by the way. But we, we would go in um, and we'd be in there all weekend. So we were in there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'd get up Sunday morning. We'd go home. If we were close enough, we'd go home and we'd wash up and come back. But we weren't always close enough because we used to go to church. How far was Auburn? About 40, 45, 45 minutes from where we lived. So we would have to go into the to the to, to the back portion of the church and wash up and all that kind of stuff. But we'd go in there. <clears throat> excuse me. And they wouldn't even let us drink water in those days when you were fasting. Absolutely. How many of y'all would do that today? Not many. I couldn't get many volunteers for that. But, but, but we'd go in there, and the thought was that because we were in there and we were isolated from the world, and we were in our Bibles, and we were uh, not listening to worldly stuff, not watching worldly stuff, all those kind of things, we were in there, that we were somehow more spiritual by coming out than when we went in. My God. But what that does is it means you're trying to add something to what God has already done. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And it doesn't bring any more success. What it does is give you dry mouth and stanky breath. Absolutely. Hmm? 
and you come out weaker than you went in many cases because you abstained from, I mean, they wouldn't even let us drink water. Am I right about it? You couldn't drink water. So you come in, and, and you, know, you say what you want. Well, I would never do that. Well, we were kids. We, that's the way they trained us. And that's what they knew and believed to be the, the, the way to get God to bless us. I'm submitting to you that God has already blessed you. He's already given you <laughs> all things that pertain to life and godliness in the kingdom. He's already released to you the blessing of Abraham. He's already given you all the things you could ever desire, not just want, desire. Needs are already taken care of. He's already done that. But your mind doesn't necessarily agree with that. I need some water. Can I have some water? So with that being said, excuse me. with that being said, <clears throat> thank you, dear. Appreciate it. You can sit up there. Thank you. With that being said, listen, let's go. Let's let's finish reading this real quick. And you just make a note here. Um, again, verse 13. And when we eat and drink and find happiness in all our achievements, this is a gift from God. Now, I'm going to say this and don't don't get don't get religious on me. OK, I don't care what you do. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how much success you have in the financial realm. I don't care how much success you have in the, in the music realm, in the, in the political realm, in the, the, the realm of being an author or anything. You know, I don't care what it is. It, I don't care. Even as a preacher, I don't care how many churches you pastor. I don't care how many people you bring to the Lord. All of it is a gift from God. And so you can't ascribe any real weight to it. And people do it all the time. And it's dangerous to do because the next thing you know, they, they, they become, and, and, and Mandy alluded to it when she, when she said a, uh, a few minutes ago, what happens is we start going through this Christian uh, uh, um, uh, mannerism and not really tapping into the real power of God. If the po <clears throat> Excuse me. I submit to you this. Look up at me. I submit to you this before I move on from this. If, if, if God wants you healed, why wouldn't he want you wealthy? Why? Why wouldn't he want you wealthy? Can you do more with more money? Absolutely you can. Because, because now, now listen to me, it's not about money. I'm just saying that because that's the struggle that we identify. Nobody raised their hand when I asked them if they didn't need any more money. And I'm not preaching on money, I'm preaching on who God is. If you don't know this, you'll go through a religious existence, you'll live, you'll die, you'll go to heaven. And I believe that the Lord will say, you know, why would you leave so much on the table? Why couldn't you believe me for the blessing of Abraham to come on your life in such a profound way that whenever you wanted to go to the boundary waters, you just went and not only did you go by yourself, you took whoever. What do, you, what do you do? What did you retire as? A okay. No, 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 that's good. That, a housewife. Mom and a grandma. Mom and a grandma. How precious are your babies? Who ain't they precious? We had our grandbabies, up, some of them over last night. Oh, my goodness. We stayed up all night trying to get that little boy to go to sleep. Them little girls, was, they was jumping in the bed and everything else. Don't you want every mom and grandma to experience that? Yes. yes. How many of them could you bless? If you were in their life and recognized their need was simply not having to live paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. Come on now. Pauline, international ministry, for lack of a better term. How many people walk through your office on a given day that you would love to say, listen, I got it covered. Take it in the name of the Lord and not not have to worry about yours. Oh, God, help me this morning. Huh? That's the God kind of lifestyle. But it won't come unless you believe for it. Somebody's got to tell you this. See, what we've done is we've come and we've tried to we tried to make church just about coming to church. I get a dance and a shout and I feel better. Right. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And we go through these motions of an existence that is not manifesting the fruit of God's plan. Help me, somebody. 
God never intended for you to be healthy. He didn't, he didn't even intend for you just to be saved, did he? Salvation stops at the door of the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. Salvation stops at the door of the kingdom, but discipleship and believing walks through the hallways of heaven. The Bible says, come boldly unto the throne of God, unto the throne of grace. And so what we do is we don't stop at the threshold of just being saved. I'm not satisfied just being born again. I need more. Because see, if it's not about more, I, I would look, stand up, girl. I said it. Ain't no other girl I'm going to tell to stand up in this house. She ain't going to like this, but she's going to do it because she know better. Give me a hand. When we were out there in the world and Luther was playing. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't. Come on now. Come on now. You're going to help them. What did we do? We look at each other in the eye. I'll be all in her face. I'll be like, oh, smooth, Mac Daddy, girl, you just know you are the one. Huh? And so I would dance. We would dance in the house, in, 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 in that house. <laughs> so when I come to the house of God, why would I not dance in his house? Am I ashamed? You sit down. I don't know why you were ashamed. The, the old Pentecostals just say that we didn't stop dancing. We just changed partners. Mm. All right. All right. I, I'll save that for another time. Another crowd. Amen. I don't want to throw y'all off. Where'd I leave you off? Verse 14. And I know that whatever God does will be forever. Say forever. Write this down. Don't go there. Isaiah 46 and 10. Uh -huh. Isaiah 46 and 10. Put it up, gentlemen, real quick. But don't you turn there. You stay where you're at. Isaiah 46 and 10. When it gets up there, would you read it collectively for me, please? Let me know when it's up there. Is it up there? Isaiah 46, verse 10. Now, again, we said, I know that whatever God does will be forever. Say forever. forever. Is it up there? Yeah. Read it. Why ain't y'all reading Can you add to that? Can you add to that? Has it already been declared? Stand up, Mandy. I hear the Lord this morning. The presence of the Lord has been on you all week long, hasn't it? He's been ministering to you and talking to you thing about things that seem impossible to you. The impossibility of them is not for you to even dwell on. But rather, he lets you know that they are impossible because he wants your trust in him to go to another level. If you will trust me, saith the Lord, I will do things that simply you cannot do without me because I hate self-reliance. So your trust in me is well-grounded and well-rounded. I will do exceeding abundantly, Ephesians 3, above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you, saith the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. I'm telling you, you watch and see what I'm saying. So he says here, only I can tell you the future. How many of y'all want to know the future? Oh, y'all ain't responding this morning. Y'all don't care about the future? I do. I want to know what, what is the right street to turn on because I ain't trying to get in traffic. I want to know what outfit to wear because I ain't trying to wear the wrong one. I want to know what the next fortune or income stream or I don't I want to know in advance of what the enemy tries to put on my life. I want to know because it helps me know how to pray. But he's already declared it over your life. All right. 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 Turn with me to Galatians. First chapter, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to pray for you this morning after the conclusion. Galatians 1. Galatians 1. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
When you have it, just say amen. We, we, we have not come into the place yet. Yet. I said yet. But also remember, remember what daddy used to say? Daddy used to say, don't say I'm still saved. He used to say I'm yet saved because yet implies an act of salvation. Man, we, we learn this stuff when we were kids. You know, still saved. Still, anything that's still is stagnant. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So, you know, whether his theology was in the right place or not, is not it really doesn't matter, but there's some truth there. You know, I'm, I'm yet married to this beautiful woman of God. And plan on being yet married to her next year this time. Two years, 10 years, 15, 20. Then put us at what, 75? No, that'd be 50, 55. No, I'm talking about our anniversary. It'd be 55, oh. 35, <clears throat> 20 years from now. Now, you can say what you want. Why he talk like that? Because I am speaking to my future. I will not have Alzheimer's. Amen. She will not have Alzheimer's. Amen. I will not have cancer. Amen. She will not have cancer. Amen. See, I'm the spiritual high priest over her life. Amen. Our kids will not go to hell. Amen. We decided that a long time ago. Our grandbabies, there's not one seed off the line of the Tommy Roberts branch of the Roberts family that will go to hell. Not one. Amen. Not one. Amen. Not one. You can bank on that one because I'm not going to allow it. God has already declared my end from my beginning. He didn't get me born again. <laughs> he didn't get me born again just for me to go to heaven. And, 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 and now I'm going to get real bodacious because I know I, I'm, I'm finished now. <laughs> Woo. I had somebody come up to me yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. He's getting out of the car. I, I text him back and forth a couple times because how many of you were here the first Sunday night of the month in the service? <laughs> if they weren't here, they better go, they better go back in here. But some of the same stuff he was saying, they were declaring. I got out of the car yesterday. We had an amazing week. I mean, absolutely amazing. It's amazing what you can get out of the presence of God when you, when you intentionally get into his presence for a whole week. And a, a guy in the usher, a guy in the parking lot, the Bible says to despise, not prophesy. And, you know, I mean, how many of you, close your Bibles, I'm finished. Close your Bibles. I'm not going to go to Galatians 6. I'm going to leave y'all hanging until next week. Maybe y'all come back. Maybe y'all, anybody coming back next week? Lisa, you coming back next week? <laughs> it's going to get better. Uh, it does every week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and so, uh, so, so we were challenged. Let me, let me, how much time I got? Okay. Um, the first night we got there on Sunday night, we left and we had to come back. <laughs> we left and had to come back. We were, we were, were we in West Branch? I think we turned around in West Branch and came back. I don't know where we were, but we forgot something, so we had to come back. So we came back and the devil was working on me because he was trying to make me upset, frustrated, and, you know, ticked off. I cleaned that up for some of y'all who are real sensitive because I could have said another word. <laughs> And so he didn't, it didn't work, though. I was listening to a message by a gentleman by the name of Rick Renner on the road. <sighs> oh, the word is so powerful. Some of y'all are cheating yourselves. Can I say this? I'm going to say this out loud. I'm particularly going to talk to some of you ministers that are licensed under this ministry. Y'all need to stop listening to everything and start fine-tuning your hearing to the voice of God. There's a reason why you are assigned to this detachment, this battalion. There's a reason why you are in this company of believers. So you need to begin to listen better. I'm going to leave it at that right now because we're getting ready to have a minister's meeting not too long from now. Anyway, and so we, I was listening to it as I was blessed and we're driving up the highway. And, oh, we pulled up on this horrific accident. 
Andaro kubahate bari ishtukuri amanistiari. And it was only one car accident. And just from the looks of it, you could about tell that either a tire, somebody blew a tire or somebody fell asleep at the wheel because there was no other cars in sight. This was a one vehicle accident and it was absolutely atrocious. Are you hearing me this morning? And that person, I pray that they were prepared to meet the Lord because it, it, from the natural, it did not look good. They might have survived. I don't know. I'm not. That's between them and God. But I'm telling you that there is a plan of the enemy to destroy you every second that you have that you take breath on this planet. He is trying to destroy you and your lifeline and your seed after you. But you have to stand up, be bodacious, be bold and say, you know what? I know who I am and whose I am. And I will not allow the snare of the enemy. I will not be trapped. I will not be caught up in all of this nonsense going on around me I am a child of God and say it with such authority that your voice Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane he didn't lift a sword Peter lifted the sword but he spoke read it for yourselves and at the voice of his speaking whew, all of them fell down and it wasn't just three, 10, 15. There were hundreds of soldiers that came to get one man. What could he possibly do with all of these hundreds of soldiers? But the, 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 the presence of God was so strong that they recognized that this was no ordinary man. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, are not ordinary people. Amen. You got to stop acting ordinary. Ooh. So we drove and we got there and a gentleman by the name of Tudor Bismarck, I told y'all before I left, was going to speak that night. I hadn't heard him in person. I'd heard him before, but I hadn't heard him in person. What a gift from God. Talked about generational blessings. You always hear about generational curses. Oh, yeah. Very rarely do you hear about generational blessings. How many of you know? That no matter what your situation is right now, Toby, Nora, ha! I hear the Lord this morning. Ooh, then you say, ooh, Nora. You got to know Nora to be able to say, ooh, Nora. That's his daughter. Blessed because of your decisions. I don't care what it looks like. The God that you serve, uh huh has heard from your heart to his ears. Amen. And he has taken the, the, the path that was twisted and all discombobulated and straightened it out so that as you walk, they come in behind you. Shut up, Jim. The second night, man, that man preached that night. The second night, was it Kenneth Copeland? Yes. And I've heard Minister, Brother Copeland many times. Remember I told you about Brother Copeland last week? I was there. 82? 81, we'll be 82. Dancing around. He said something so profound, I'm going to say it to you. I'm going to see how many of y'all catch this. I'm 56 years old. Or young, however you want to say it. I don't consider age, so it doesn't matter to me what. 56. There is anointing and anointing for being 56. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, Lord, I'll say it. How many of y'all in y'all 20s? Would y'all raise your hand? If you're in your 20s. Put your hand up there. Stop holding your hand. Y'all be doing that. Y'all be like this. I ain't trying to show nobody my. Put your holy hand up there. Okay. Look, she's swinging her. Okay. All right. Good. I got it. Okay. There's an anointing for your 20s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it does not tap into the anointing for your 30s. Amen. You can live in your 20s debt free. You can own a home or homes at 20 just like you can at 30, 40, or 50. If you know the information. If you apply the information, it's there. Yes. Now, I'm going to help some of y'all that's not 20 and not 30 and not 40, 50, or 60. What's next? 
All right. There is an anointing for your 70s. And it's so powerful. Because the cumulative effect of from the time you were born to the where you are now, God did not allow you to live to see today if he didn't plan on you living to see tomorrow. See, it didn't go over very well. I didn't get. I, I. There's an anointing for your 80s. Can I say that because God was the, the one who declared that the that the years of man would be what? 120, there's an anointing all the way up to 129. After that, you're on your own. <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah. and if you're going to live that long, you're going to attend a whole lot of funerals. Be prepared. If you're going to live to be 120 something, you're going to have to attend some funerals. Because not everybody's going to live like that. So the, 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 the third night was, was what? Uh, Sam Rodriguez. Yeah, but, but the day session was a, was a woman by the name of Cheryl Brady. How many of you ever heard of Cheryl Brady? <laughs> okay, I got a couple of hands in here. She is the pastor of uh, uh, Potter's House in North Dallas. She is one of T.D. Jake's daughters in the faith. I'm going to say something here, and some of y'all can receive this, some of y'all can't, but those of you can receive it, you start applying it to your life. There's, God is raising up some strong daughters of the faith in this house. Amen. Hold on. Hold on. Because the men will not respond. Because the men have been slow to respond. The Lord says, I will raise up some daughters who will, who will, who will do what they're called to do. Amen. You do whatever you want to do with that. Amen. See how quiet it got? Yeah. I told you I'll close your Bible, so hopefully your Bible's closed. <laughs> Cheryl Brady preached on Psalm, the 23rd Psalm. I have never, as long as I've been, I am a preaching fiend in terms of hearing the word and teaching, preaching, prophesying. I, I, I go after it. I'm hungry for it. This woman worked from the beginning of the psalm to the end of the psalm and didn't miss a beat. And, and I'm telling you, it was so revelational. I, I'm believing God for the grace to preach that message in this house one day or somewhere. If not here, somewhere. Amen. Amen. Cheryl Brady. And then we had a gentleman by the name of Choco Rodriguez. Choco was, is it, was it Rodriguez? No, it was Choco de Jesus. Yeah, because he said de Jesus. Right? He, did. he did. Hispanic pastor. Beautiful, beautiful gift of God. And I mean... Oof. Ugh, Jesus. This, I'm just giving y'all a little recap of our week. And then on um, Thursday, we went into, Thursday night, we went into here at Creflo Dollar. Now, I'm going to be real transparent because this is what I do. This is the only way it's going to really bless you. I'm, I'm finishing. I got three minutes left. I have not over the years been a big Creflo Dollar fan. Just being honest. I wouldn't go out of my way to go to a Creflo Dollar meeting. I just wouldn't. It's just me. Nothing wrong with Creflo. It's just me. You know how everybody ain't going out of their way to come to a Tommy Roberts meeting. You feeling me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or your meeting, okay? In 2016, when in 2016 when we came there? 2016, he, the, I point to these two because, and you were there too, weren't you, in 2016? Uh, we were in Fort Worth at the, at the uh, Dr. Uh, Brother Copeland's Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Were you there? You were there too, weren't you? Yes, you were. Um, and that one evening, Creflo Dollar got up and started talking about grace, but he also began to talk about covenant. But he only dropped a little seed on covenant and talked more about grace. And I, I, you know, I, I bought the material because I thought, man, this is, this, is, this is good stuff. I just need to study it out. You can't just teach something just because you hear it. You have to study it out. You've got to get a revelation before you can talk about it. And boy, it was good. And I did. And I'm still working on that. And God will give it to me at the point of time for you. And so, but the other night, we heard him talk about the covenant. And we, Galatians talks about this. Now, I'm not going to get into it to the level that he talked about. You can go to his website and look it up, whatever you want to do. But I'm, I'm coming to my wife because I want to I get a good amen. That night when he taught, we heard him talking about it. We were watching him on TV. 
about a week or so, two weeks ago. We were watching them on BVOVN. Anybody watch BVOVN, by the way? Anybody? You can get it on your tablet, on the internet. BVOVN, Believer's Voice of Victory Network. Why y'all, what else y'all watching? What else y'all watching? Are you feeling me? What else are you watching? Stop watching YouTube and turn on BVOVN. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Yeah, watch Life Point. Yeah, okay. All right. How many of y'all watch? All right. You said it. Hey, look, stand up, Elder. Stand up. You said it. When's the last time you watched Life Point on, online? Who said Thursday? Stand up. Who watched Life Point last week? Who watched Life Point two weeks ago? <laughs> stand up. I want you to stand up. Stand on up. Mm. Where? Where are you <laughs> 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 Sit down, y'all. Are you feeling me? These things are here for you. I don't know what else you're watching. You ain't got to watch only. I watch, I watch my own message because I say stuff sometimes. I don't even know what I said. So I got to go back and look, listen to it. And I know you ain't got the memory like that. I know, I know y'all might be part of the Mensa. You might be way up in Mensa. Some of y'all you know what Mensa is, so that disqualifies you. But you might be way up on the memory scale. I'm just saying you might be having a photographic. What's the other, what's the other memory? It's not just photographic. Uh, uh, I, I, didactic, is that it? I can't remember what it is. Anyway, you might have a memory like but most of us ain't running like that. You need to go back and hear it again. <laughs> anyway, there's my plug for life. So anyway, <laughs> so we watched him. And then, then the other night, I'm telling you that some things were destroyed over our lives. Listen to me. Anything that gets destroyed over my life is supposed to be destroyed over your lives. We not going to know no more debt. Our days of being in debt are over. And I say that before it actually shows up at my door. Because the only way this works is to, you have to decree a thing, and the Bible says, and it shall be so. So you have to declare in advance, I am debt free. Let me try this side of the room. I am debt free. I am healed in my body. My relationships are sound. The Lord loves me like I am. My kids are not going to hell. My grandkids are not going to hell. My marriage is sound. My, God has the right mate for me at the right time in my life. Give the Lord some praise. Come on, do that real quick. Come on. And then Friday, Friday night, Dr. Winston, my God, I mean, you know, he's just a man, just like you, just like you as a woman, you're just a human being. But the more you yield yourself to God, the more he'll do through you. Mm -hmm. The more he'll do through you. I, I am on a quest now, my personal quest is to be so yielded to, to the spirit of God that he will do absolutely anything through my life to show forth his glory in other people's lives. Not even for my own benefit. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kelsey, is Kelsey here? Where Kelsey at? Get your guitar, please, sir. Randy Steester. You need to get ready. Get ready, okay? God sent you here to bless my life with your gift. Your gifting is as much as anything. He told me this on the way back, uh, driving back from Chicago. I mentioned it to him because you work underneath his department, but I'm telling you directly and I'm telling you in front of others. Get ready. Don't be concerned about what you don't know. Trust the anointing that's on your life. You have such an anointing on your life and, and I know this because you, you have been investing more time and hours in the word uh, than the average person. You have spent many, time, many hours and many minutes in self-edification by studying the word, listening to tapes, listening to music, whatever. 
And God has done that through you. But he didn't do it for you. He did it for such a time as this. So I say to you, this may sound a little weird, but it's not. There is a spirit of Esther upon you. You have been given, listen, you have been given the authority by God to walk into the very presence of kings and to receive favor. Don't sell yourself short. Your anointing is for this house. That's why God brought you here. I heard, I heard Brother Choco de Jesus say this. And I'm going to say it to you. I just, the Lord just reminded me of it. I want to say it the right way. When Jesus walked up to Peter, stand right here for me, Roger, please. When Jesus walked up to Peter, stand and face them. Peter owns the boat. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Peter owns the boat. Peter's been fishing, toiling all night long. He's been doing things in his own strength and in his own might. And as he's been doing them, there's not just Peter's boat there. Listen, there are more than one boat beside, in a slip, so to speak, beside Peter and his boat. Jesus, without randomness, walks up to the one that the Holy Spirit says walk up to. His name is Peter. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. He walks up to him. He says, Peter, he says, in essence, and I'm going to paraphrase, can I use your boat to push out a little bit so I can preach to these people? And Peter's response was, yes. But Peter said, what? We have toiled all night. We have caught nothing. Nevertheless, come on, somebody, at your word, they push out. I say to you, I say to you that obedience is better than understanding. Peter did not understand what God was getting ready to do in his life. Many of you do not understand what God is getting ready and desires to do in your life. Stop trying to figure it out up here. She and I have been doing this a long time, long time, long time, long time. I've never been able to figure this out, how God does what he does. Stop it. It is holding you back. Simply obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants us to obey. He, all the understanding will come. Did Peter understand later? Certainly he did. But not at the moment. You're in the middle of something this morning. I want to pray for you real quick. I'm going to pray for you right where you are. You're in the middle of something this morning and you're struggling with why you're here, why you're, why you're positionally right here. Why, why am I going through? Listen to me. Come on, come on, just close your eyes with me this morning. Come on, close your eyes. Why am I in the midst? You don't have to repeat after me. I want you to just hear me. Why am I struggling with this relationship issue? Why, why am I struggling with this financial issue? Why, God, is my ministry not showing forth more results? Why, God, is my, are my children this way? And God, why did my husband leave me? Why did my wife abandon me? Why, 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 why? The Bible says that multitudes remain and are in the valley of decision. Multitudes, multitudes. You have to pull yourself out of the valley of why and step into the realm of being fully persuaded. That although I don't understand why, I know him. The Apostle Paul said this. He said, I know in whom I have believed and that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I need you, and I hear the Spirit of the Lord say this, stop being so inquisitive and become more committed. I am committed that no matter what comes my way, I am fully persuaded that no matter how the day breaks and no matter how the night and the evening sets, no matter what comes my way, God is on my side. I am committed that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. I am, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am the head and not the tail, even though that's what they treat me like. That's you. And I hear the Lord say that if you will become more committed, Somebody might say, I don't know how to become more committed. Yes, you do. You need to spend more time in his presence. We read it earlier. In his presence is fullness and completeness of joy. How do I do that? 
Turn on something that is going to edify. Turn off Fox, CNN, ABC, NBC, MS. Turn that trash off. Turn it off and plug in to God. All right. Watch Life Point. My God, you know. Pretty good preacher on Life Point, I heard. Bill Winston. Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, whoever. Thank you, Father. But make sure that they are teaching faith. Not just some old religious parroting or exercise. So lay your hands on your own head. I want you to pick your hand. I want you to just lay it on your forehead. As you lay your hand on your forehead or on your temple, whichever is more convenient for you, I want you to say this after me. I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable sacrifice. I want you to say this, I am the temple of the living God, of the Holy Spirit. He resides in me. He speaks to me. I know his voice and another, come on, say it, and another I will not follow. I want you to say this, I am transformed into the image of God. I am not conformed to the thinking of the world. God, I am yours to mold and to make and to use wherever, whenever, however you see fit. I renew my mind. My mind is renewed to the authenticity and the reality of the Word of God. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, God's Word is the decision maker in my life. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. If you believe that, come on, give Him praise. If you receive that, give Him praise. Come on, come on, you believe it? Hallelujah. While you're still standing, before I dismiss you, I want to make, give a call to the altar, and receive, and just say, if there's anybody in here that doesn't, is not convinced or fully persuaded that when you die, you're going to heaven. If you're not fully, I mean fully persuaded, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not perfect. Ain't nobody in here perfect. If you're perfect, it's because Jesus Christ has made you perfect, but you ain't perfect in yourself. But if you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I want you to, I want you to, I want to, I want to ask you, why not? Why not? That's what, that's what, you know, saying is, if I wasn't saved, you know what I'd do? I'd get saved. And you know what I would get saved? Right now. I lived unsaved for way too many years. It was a disaster. I got saved. I got better information. My life began to change. All my problems didn't go away. But all of a sudden, I began to sense the presence of God. And eventually, he separated, separated my wife and I into the ministry, called us to pastor a church, churches. This is, I hear the Lord say, and I'm going to say it, this is not the only church he's called us to pastor. I'm just telling you what he said. I don't have a problem. But with that being said, it starts by being saved. If you're not saved this morning and you want to get saved, I'm going to invite you to just come up real quick, stand in front of me, and we'll just pray with you. It's not a hard, it's not hard. <clears throat> One of the things about the Old Covenant, Old Testament, is that the atonement for sins was what? An annual, right? Sacrifice. It was annual. So every year they had to come before the priest and say, you know, I've sinned. Deuteronomy 20, 26 tells you this as much as anything else. Leviticus, he said, 
I've sinned, this is who I was, this is what I did, forgive me, I bring these, this offer, this sacrifice to you, and I need my, soul, my sins atoned for. Okay, the priest would say, go, sin no more, and he'd do this time after time after time. With Jesus, the sins of all men and women that they ever could think of, that they ever could do, or that, that they ever might do, have already been covered by his sacrifice. You can't do something that hadn't been covered by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice of Jesus. So with that being said, so anybody that feels like, well, you know, I did this, or I've done this, or I'm not this, nah, that's just your head talking. That's what the devil tries to convince you to do. But when I got born again, I'm telling you, I, I didn't feel saved all the time. Can I say that today is what, the 16th? I don't feel, feel particularly saved this morning. I don't feel it. I know it. I know that if I die right now, Y'all got to clean up for one thing. <laughs> I don't care what y'all do after I'm gone. I don't care. And my wife and I got an agreement now. You know, she be calling me back. Get back here. Get, don't, don't get your butt. Get, get your hiney back here. <laughs> and I got to tell the Lord, Lord, do I have to go back? Yeah, tell me to go back. She's not going to quit. Because I ain't going to quit on her. But with that being said, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go this morning? Come on now. I'm not just talking to people that have never accepted you. I'm talking about are you. Are you ready to go? That's what Mandy was, when that, that word that she gave. Are you ready to go? Or are you just going through the motions? It's a dangerous thing just to go through the motions. I don't care how many people here. It doesn't matter to me. You ready? I'm ready. And we move into the realm. What does John say? John says that not, I think it's John. I might be wrong there. But John the revelator said, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. He says in one place, all those that look are eagerly looking towards his return. Man, I'm excited about him coming back. I'm going to keep working until he tells me, he tells me to quit. I'm going to keep working until he come back, till he show up, man. And just because he walk in the door doesn't mean that he's back. I have an expectation that Jesus, I'm going to see a visitation of the Lord in my bedroom. Yeah, 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 your kurate said. I'm talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, show up and there is God in the manifest presence. He looks like an angel, but yet he's God. Because my life is ready for more. Is your life ready for more this morning? Lift your hands before God if it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We are indeed ready for more. We're hungry for your presence, God. We're thirsty for your righteousness. We thank you, God, that we are the salt of the earth and the light and, and the light of the earth, God. We're both salt and light. And we go out here, Father, just allowing our lives to infect and influence other people's lives. We're not shy. We're not, we're not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And so believing is simply a, 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 an act of the will this morning. I believe that Jesus is my Lord. I believe that God the Father, Abba, the Daddy of all mankind, sits on the throne and is delighted when Tommy walks in the room. I believe that the Holy Spirit of God resides on the inside of me. And he orders my steps according to his plan for my life. I will not be ashamed. This is the confidence that I have in him, that if I ask anything according to his will, 1 John 5, that I know that he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, do you know this morning? If you know that he hears you, you know that you have the petition that you have placed before him. In other words, your prayers have been answered today. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice, lift your hands before God, open your, open your mouth, and just tell him, thank you. Come on, say thank you. Come on, say thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, say something. Say something, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Say something, come on. Come on, come on. He's listening, he's hearing, he's listening. Come on, don't get cute. Don't get cute, come on. Don't get self-conscious. Open your mouth. Father, I love you, Jesus. Jesus, woo, it's all about you. It's all about you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Blessed be the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. You are Zion's righteous governor. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To that I say to you, amen.